St. Germain spoke to me and said, it's all you have to do is spend 15 minutes being in a state of appreciation for the I am presence that you are. Now, one of the things that the I am discourse has taught that I was having trouble with, with this whole idea of manifesting, is written on page 318. And I'd like to give this to you as we get ready to close. The student should constantly look within his human self and see what habits or creations are there that need to be plucked out and disposed of. For only by refusing to any longer allow habits of judging, condemning, and criticizing to exist can he be free. Are you hearing this? The true activity of the student is only to perfect his own world, and he cannot do it as long as he sees imperfection in the world of any of God's children. That includes the person who opened fire in Aurora. That includes Osama bin Laden. That includes Adolf Hitler. Any judgments that we have of judgment, criticism, and condemnation. And I wanted to manifest something so bad for such a long period of time, but the person that was involved in it, I kept having this sense of judgment toward this person. And it wasn't until I was able to say, I accept you for what you are. It's what led me to my father's grave in 1974. And I stood there after being sent there by a series of just absolutely impossible coincidences. I stood there on his grave after being filled with rage and hatred and anger and bitterness towards this man who would walk out on my mother and her three young boys. I was the youngest. And I finally found out about his death, that he had been dead 10 years, but I went to his grave in 1974 on August the 30th. And as I walked away from his grave, because I really went there to piss on his grave, I was so just filled with rage in him. And as I walked back to the rent-a-car, something called me back, and I went and stood there looking at this plate on the ground that said Melvin Lyle Dyer, 1914 to 1964. Uh, and something came over me. In fact, we've made a film about it, <laughs> another film called My Greatest Teacher. And I was able to say to my father, from this moment on, from this moment on, I send you love. Who am I to judge you and condemn you? You did what you knew how to do, given the conditions of your life. And I accept you for it. Mark Twain once said that forgiveness is the fragrance that the violet sheds on the heel that has crushed it. On the heel that has crushed it. Enjoy it. My greatest teacher. Who was my greatest teacher? After that, my entire life changed. I stopped drinking. I started exercising. My writing shifted. I went back to New York. I was professor at St. John's University in New York City. I took two weeks to go down to Fort Lauderdale, Florida, checked into the Spindrift Motel, and wrote a book called Your Erroneous Zones in 14 days. 14 days. Today, there's close to 100 million copies in 47 languages around the world. It's, um, and everything in my life after that shifted. My diet changed, my habits changed. Everything turned around because I got the rage out of me. Because in order to attract the elements that are going to bring you the ability to manifest into your life what you want, remember how I opened this program. We do not manifest what we want. That comes from a place of missing. We manifest what we are. The angels who will guide you throughout your life will only be there for you when they recognize themselves in you. And they cannot recognize themselves and you and guide you when you are filled with hatred, anger, judgment, condemnation, bitterness, fear, 
anxiety, stress. You have to let all of that go and be love. Be in this place a perfect divine love. Love for everything and everyone on our planet. That's self-actualization at work.